I asked not to have my contract renewed with Universal because I received an offer from Warner Brothers. It was a very generous offer. And during that time also, I, I was, uh, I was uh, engaged to get married to, you know, then would be my second wife. And, um, and I knew the, you know, with, the, with the salary that Warner Brothers was offering, it was double my salary for Universal. I think Universal was paying me like 35 or 40,000 a year, and Warner was offering 75,000 a year to be head of the entire casting department. So I'd have a title and a nice salary. And, and but most, most importantly, I would be, have a chance to cast a sequel to Roots. The first Roots had been such a phenomenal hit, they were doing a follow up, and they said, you're, you know, you're, you're one assignment we can guarantee that you'll be responsible for casting would be Roots too. So it was a, just too attractive to turn it down. So I left uh, Universal and went over to Warner Brothers, and, and there once again hired. My, and staffed myself with, with a woman named Eileen Knight, who became the first black female casting director in Hollywood, and, and who went on to have a wonderful career of her own. But, but Roots provided me an opportunity to work with Stan Margulies and, and David Wolper. And, I mean, along all the way, every producer, even during the Universal days, I would consider myself to be a, a student, you know, because I always aspired to be it. I knew I would one day be producing, which meant to me being responsible for the, for the, for the product. Just taking more responsibility, and the, because casting, the way I look at it is basically, you know, the the, the quote that eighty percent of direction is casting. Well, I think eighty percent of filmmaking is good writing and good casting. And not not to say that twenty percent doesn't is not important. That's like you know whatever your heart's twenty percent of your body, but it, you can't make it without it. So the the director's vision in composing the movie is only. But if you get the if you have a good story and you get the casting right. You, know, you have to work hard to mess it up. Um, so working with every producer, you know, every aspect is, was like to me was like was I treated it as an educational opportunity. So working on Roots with Sam Margulies, who became a, a dear friend, and, and and David Wolper, and just watching the way that they assembled this this, you know, it was one of the largest you know miniseries ever, and that set the stage for me to ultimately cast two of the other largest miniseries in the history of television. That's Made in America, and also, um, um, sorry, uh, America with a K, and the Winds of War, mm -hmm. but it, but the it was the roots that required a special employment contract for actors because you know, there was there was three day, there was uh, weeklies, but for a miniseries, the, the the period of time, some of the schedules built into the Screen Actors Guild agreement didn't, wasn't really designed. So if you had to pay actors, if you hire an actor one month or one week in, in month A and then you have to hire him another three months later to come back because the series covered such a span. So SAG created and I helped devise a special um, format of hiring actors for Roots. And it was, you know, and once again, my, my love of actors was not to deny or to, or, or, or to cheat actors, was simply to create a, a, a hiring format that worked for both the production company as well as the as the actor. So, what do you think you learned from working with David Wolper and Stan Margulies? Oh, just you know, put quality first. Quality. There was no compromise, and David had enough. And because of the success of the first one, and um, and and the detail, and just the detail and the preparation, really, that the way you prep is the way you shoot, and. Uh, just really the quality that went into it, that you know, uncompromising and creating opportunities. You know, the uh, George Stanford Brown directed an episode, and and and, and Lloyd Richards, who was you know, one of the most noted, distinguished black directors at the time. He was um, head of the drama department at Yale, but had had a storied career as a acting coach and ran Eugene O'Neill Festival. And Stan Margulies provided him an opportunity. So the you know, whenever you wherever you can promote talent, do it. So talk about the casting process a little, because you had a mix of known and unknown actors for that. Oh yeah, and it was it was, it was such a, a phenomenal experience where we, we everyone from unknowns to Marlon Brando. Mm -hmm. um, and finding and when picking up, you know, when, when the bar had been set so high with the first roots, and the story was a continuation. And the scripts, once again, the scripts were, were excellent, so, um, but, so it, it was. It wasn't as, as challenging as I thought it would be because everyone wanted to be part of it. And actually, it was Marla Brando wrote a letter to Alex Haley saying, "If there's a sequel, I'd like to be part of it." Mm -hmm. Right. So it wasn't like we went after him. He reached out to us. 
but throughout finding roles for so many black actors, it was like a, it was you know a crowning glory for me to be able to so many actors I I admired and wanted to hire. You know, the frustration was there was more talent than I could ever accommodate, but at least you know we had the really the pick of of, of the best.